we study your precious word. And Lord, we're going to thank you. Go ahead and thank you for all that you're going to do and all that you've done. And we ask these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Galatians chapter number 2. Galatians chapter number 2. And just to let everyone know, we here at the building have already went through Galatians chapter 2, but that was the first week that we started having technical difficulties and it didn't upload and I didn't realize that. And then the next week we just started on chapter 3, but we only got through part of it and I was going to title it chapter 3 part 1. We're probably going to do chapter 3 in at least two parts. But instead of being all jumbled up on YouTube, we've decided I've asked everybody, and we do have kind of a small crowd here tonight, so it's not that big of a deal. I, I, I don't think you don't, they don't think they mind. But we're going to go back to chapter two. The, the folks in the building are getting a repeat. But yet those of you online, it'll be fresh and new to you. But that's what we're going to do. And then I, hopefully I'm going to try to get back over here before next Wednesday and put chapter 3 part 1 on and then that way next Wednesday we can carry on with chapter 3 part 2 and it'll all be in sequence and hopefully if our technology the devil will get out of our technology uh, it'll be back to normal next week so I do appreciate you folks enduring this message one more time uh, but you never know we might get something else out of it you can keep reading it but we started out with chapter 1. I wanted to do a chapter by chapter, verse by verse, if you will, study, because there's many ways, like we started, there's many ways to study your Bibles. There's word studies, there's phrase studies, there's chapter studies, there's book studies, there's different types of studies that you can do. And I like to do chapter studies like this. Um, for example, like a word study is whenever we've done studies on hell or on everlasting and aeon. You go into the scriptures. You can do a justification study. You know, words where you trace the words and let the see how the scriptures use the, the words in scripture and trace those words and look them up, whether it's the English or the Hebrew and Greek words. And that's how you do a word study. Well, what got me wanting to do a chapter study was because through all the politics... I noticed how the news, that all of them's got corrupt. Every one of them. I don't trust a one of them. And it's because you can take, you know what they call sound bites. They can take sound bites of what someone said and build something and create their own narrative. And both sides does it. I don't care which side you're on. They, they both do it. They can take a little snid bit here and a little snippet here and put it together and say, see there, this man thinks this. Whenever they really don't, or they took it completely out of context. Well, that same thing can take place in teaching, in the, in, in the Word of God. You can take sound bites, if you will, out of the Scripture and basically build your own story. And for example, I remember here, you know, how you can get over there and talk about how in John 3, 16, the Bible says that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And then they'll take you over there to Luke chapter 16 and see right here, the rich man, he lift his eyes up in hell. See there, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't believe in Jesus one day, you're going to go to hell. And technically, if you get into those, both of those verses of Scripture and, and put them both in context, you will find that John 3.16 and Luke 16, they really have nothing to do with one another. Completely two different teachings. But yet they can take these sound bites and they can create a narrative and they can create an agenda. Well, I like getting into a chapter something like this or into a book and just read it and let, let the writer, let the Bible tell us what he's saying. And in, we started with Galatians chapter 1 and the reason I did that is because Galatians always sticks out to me because they were a legalistic church. They started going back to works 
And we come out of a legalistic church. So I like going through Galatians because it, you can kind of compare the old way to what Paul was correcting them. But in chapter 1, you saw where basically <coughs> Paul came in with greetings, gr gr greeting the church at Galatia. And then shortly, as soon as he starts writing the book, Paul goes right in and starts setting the theme in which he was writing them, which is in verse number 6. He says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of God unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. He goes right in, and this is pretty much the theme of the entire book is Paul is writing these people to correct them of them so being so soon removed. People had come in and began, and he, and he, and he spends chapter 1 here, and you go back and you'll see where he, he, he reminds them, he's like verse, uh, in verse 13, he says, For ye have heard of my conversation in times past in the Jews' religion, how beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. He was, he was laying his foundation saying, I know you, I used to be who I was. Remember who I was compared to who I am now. And he was having to remind these people, I'm not the old Saul. Matter of fact, there's a lot of them, they were afraid of him because they had heard because uh, look in verse number 23, he comes and he says, But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in time past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorified God in me. They had heard this man that once persecuted them was now preaching the faith that he once tried to destroy. Now remember, as you go into chapter 2, chapters and verses and punctuation was not put into the Bible until the 1700s. So as you're reading, you've got to remember, this is an entire letter. This is an entire letter. There was no chapters and verses. So as he comes out of chapter 1 in our Bibles, he keeps reading and he says, look in verse 18 of chapter 1, he says, Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. This is after he, Paul had explained that I received this gospel not of man but of God. He said that I did not go up to Jerusalem, I, like in verse number 17, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went unto Arabia. That's, on the that's out in the desert. And I mentioned how it's good for us to get away and return again to Damascus where, where, where Paul all, it all began with Paul. But then after three years, he went up to Jerusalem and spent, day, and spent 15 days with Peter. But then in chapter 2 it begins and he says, Then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem. He went again up to Jerusalem. Now when you read about Jerusalem in the Bible, that is the main hub for who? The Jews. That's the main, that's their capital. That's, 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 it definitely represents the Jewish nation there. He says, after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, and I, he says, he took Titus with me also. He says, and I went up by revelation. It was revealed to him by God. He went there by revelation, and what did he do? And communicated unto them, who's them? Those in Jerusalem. And communicated unto them, that gospel, not just a gospel, not just any gospel, that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. But he says, privately to them which were of reputation, least by any means I should run or had run in vain. Paul knew his life was in danger by preaching the gospel among the Pharisees, just like he was one that tried to kill believers, now he is a believer. So he knew his life was in jeopardy, and plus he did not want the, the ministry to stop. But look what he says in verse number 3. He says, But neither Titus, 
who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren, unawares, brought in, who came in privately, privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Now, I need you to try to put yourself in these people's situation, get in your imaginary time machine and go back and take into consideration what Paul is saying here. Titus was not compelled to be circumcised. Why do you reckon he was not? There was people there, just like in the next verse says, false brethren. He called them false brethren. They appeared to be brethren, but they were not. And it was because of what he had warned them in chapter 1 that there was some among you that are preaching another gospel. And he says that you were so soon removed from the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Any other gospel other than grace is another gospel. And the fact that Titus was not compelled to be circumcised tells us that some of these people were adding to their salvation. No doubt, just like there were some people that believed in Jesus, I believe it was the Sadducees, they began believing, but they didn't believe in a resurrection. They were the ones that did not believe in a resurrection. And I want to remind you that it was in the book of Acts that Paul reminded us and tells us that it is him that I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. <coughs> Peter rece Paul received this revelation from Jesus Christ himself when he got knocked off his horse on the way to Damascus. Peter, John, and the other apostles, you got to remember, guys, when these apostles and the disciples were walking and talking with Jesus and when Jesus was teaching his disciples, Paul was not a part of this group. Paul was a Pharisee back then. Paul was the one hunting these men down, trying to kill them. Matter of fact, it was Saul that held Stephen's jacket, coat, while they stoned him. Okay? It was after all of this that Jesus appeared to Paul the Apostle and not only during the Damascus Road experience, Paul speaks of another time that he met a man and he, speaking of Jesus, where Jesus revealed unto him truth of the gospel. Paul had received the whole counsel of God. Peter, James, John, the disciples, they had not received it. They had not received the whole picture. Paul had. Paul received that. So remember that. Keep that in mind. But, but, but Titus was not compelled means to be a necessitate, to necessitate, necessitate to be circumcised because he knew the truth. He had been with Paul and he knew that you could not add or take away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. Anything you add to grace, ladies and gentlemen, you are changing that from the truth of God, the truth of the gospel to another gospel. Now, I need you to remember and keep in mind who is he telling these, this to? Those in Jerusalem. And he says in verse 4, And that because of false brethren uh, unawares brought in who came in privately despite our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that, we, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom he gave place, that we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. He said they didn't give place to the Jews hogwash. They didn't take, they didn't accept it. They, they said, I ain't, they, they knew better. And this, and I've got this wrote down. If the Jews had their own gospel, why didn't Paul and Titus recognize it and honor it? Do you understand what I'm saying? Why didn't he accept that, the fact that they were... Why didn't he say, listen, y'all have got y'all's story. Y'all have got y'all's gospel. We're teaching our gospel. Because this goes back into the two gospel issue deal. Because 
the theme, one of the sound bites, we're coming up on a sound bite here in just a few minutes. But to find out just like that sound bite, does that sound bite mean what the news is telling us that it means? Is it in context? This is how you put it in context is by reading the whole chapter, reading the whole book. Not just taking a phrase or a verse out of the Bible and say, see there? You've got to read up. Now, what's going on here? Galatians, he had done talk to Galatians, the gospel of Jesus Christ, but then he hears that they're so soon removed from it. Okay? How were they removed from it? And it was by those that had perverted the gospel. It wasn't the fact that these people wasn't... All good lies has got some form of truth in it. You know it. I mean, I went to a Baptist church for 17 years and everything I learned over there was not a lie. I mean, I learned a lot of good stuff over there, scripturally. But then it's mingled in and when you mingle this other stuff in, that's when it becomes a lie. So he said they had perverted the gospel, the gospel itself. They had taken the gospel and done something to it to make it a lie. Well, he goes on and says that Titus, and he just says this, which automatically should tell us they're teaching circumcision too. What they were doing was, yes, it's Jesus, but... Yes, I know you come to the altar that day and accepted Jesus Christ, but do you tithe? You get what I'm saying? Well, you know, I know it's by grace, brother. I know it's by grace. But a, a real Christian will, will cut that hair. Them dresses will get long. See, and that's all they're doing. They're tacking on things. Grace is grace, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if God compels you to cut your hair, cut your hair. If he don't, don't. Has nothing to do with your salvation. These people were starting to tack things on to the salvation saying, yeah, but. There is no but. And that's what Paul was writing these people. Saying, these people, they've come in and they've taken you away from what I taught you. And he says, I went to Jerusalem. And what did he say? I preached the same gospel to them in Jerusalem that I was preaching to the Gentiles. To me it does, Harold. To me it does. And we're getting there, but I want you to look at the whole picture. We're letting the Bible tell us, remember? We're not telling the Bible what to say. We're wanting the Bible to tell me what to believe. That's what I did back in the Baptist church, y'all. I already knew in my brain, I had an idea. I had my own story of what the Bible said. I just needed to get in here and find scripture to back it up. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? And guess what? When you do sound bites, you can do that. But not when you hear the whole video. Not when you watch the whole interview. Then that little sound bite that people are trying to take out of context suddenly makes sense because you watch the whole interview, not just the sound bite. That's what we're doing. We're listening to the whole interview. Paul said in verse 5, we didn't give place for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. He, they stood up to him. He says, but of these who seem to be somewhat, that, that phrase that, that them to be somewhat, it means those to be consulted. In other words, the learned ones. In other words, the ones that were teaching, the teachers, the preachers, the people that people turn to for information. These were the ones coming up to Paul saying, no, Paul, let's explain something to you. And listen to what he said. <coughs> he says, but of these who seem to be somewhat, Whosoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God expecteth, uh, accepteth no man's person. 
For they who seemed to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. That phrase added nothing to me means they didn't teach me anything. In other words, they came to Paul trying to school Paul and Paul would come back and blah, 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 blah. And he basically showed them like, hmm, this old boy knows more than I thought he did. They thought they were going to teach him something. He ended up teaching them something. But look what he says in the next phrase, contrary wise. He said, they didn't add nothing to me. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. We'll stop there for a second. Here's the sound bite. Right there's the sound bite. Verse 7. But contrary wise, when they, who's the they? Those of reputation and those in the Jerusalem that thought that were perverting this gospel. And these, and these men that had come, that Paul was speaking with, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as, and I'm going to notice this, you see, in, in, if y'all got King James Bibles, that next, the gospel is italicized. That means it was added. So, but contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as of the circumcision unto Peter, for he, now keep in mind, Back in chapter 1, he says he went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and, uh, and abode with him 15 days. wonder what they talked about. The football scores? Think him and Peter were talking about the weather? What you reckon they were talking about? Huh? Potluck. <laughs> Pot roast. Rest, uh, potluck recipes. They exchanged recipes. Reckon they talked about the gospel? You reckon they talked about Jesus? Reckon? I almost bet you that was all they talked about. Okay? And when these men, now remember, these men had accepted Peter and Paul and, J I mean, Peter and James and John. See, the apostles were accepted because they knew they were all. But here comes Saul of Tarsus. Pa Paul was the outsider that was having to prove to himself that he's part of the group. The same Jesus that taught you in person, I've seen him on the road to Damascus. Paul was having to prove to these men, I've seen the risen Savior. Jesus saved me. I believe the gospel now. I now believe it. Matter of fact, I not only believe it, but God has called me to be the apostle to take this gospel to the Gentiles. He's been talking to Peter for 15 days. Earlier. Now that's earlier. That's 15 years earlier. And remember... They couldn't get in their cars and just ride around. I mean, they visited somebody. It might be 10 years before you see somebody again because, Lord, you know how long it took to travel? But You get what I'm saying. It just wasn't like it is today. You couldn't get on the Internet and, hey, how you doing, Peter? You know, inbox me. You know, email me. Here's my email account. But they had talked. Huh? Friend me. Send me a friend request. <clears throat> but he says that they tried to educate him. He said they added nothing to me but contrary wise. What does contrary wise mean? However, or the opposite, when they saw that the gospel was committed unto me, unto the Gentiles, 
like it was unto Peter. Now the sound bite has been used, ladies and gentlemen, that verse 7 teaches that there are two separate gospels. Remember that, because we're not done. Two separate gospels. But he's convincing them, no, 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 I'm not different, guys, remember. I'm part. He's convincing them. Listen to what the next verse says. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the, of the circumcision. The apostleship. In other words, that was his ministry. Peter's ministry was to the circumcision. The same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. It's the same just towards what? Two different groups of people. See, Peter didn't get the call even though Peter said in the book of Acts, he said that God first used to preach for me to preach the gospel unto the Gentiles first. Peter admitted that and said that in, in the book of Acts. But that wasn't his ministry. Paul came onto the scene and God called him and told him to take this unto the nations. Okay? Keep reading with me. Verse 9, And when James and Cephas, which is another word, a name for Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave me and Barnabas what? The right hands of fellowship. You know what that means? And you got to remember, these people back then, guys, it, they were very traditionalists. If a man gave you the right hand of fellowship, you were in agreement with these people. They were in agreement. So once Paul was convincing these people, and James and Cephas and these people saw that they had the same grace and the same gospel. They gave them the right hand of fellowship. They said, we're in agreement. But what did they agree to do? They gave me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. Have you gotten in any of this that we're reading so far that Paul is recognizing two different gospels? Two different ways of explaining. Have you got that? Let Paul tell you what to believe. Don't tell Paul what to believe. Do not sound bite Paul. Have you gotten two separate gospels from this yet? Me neither. Me neither. Matter of fact, there's even more proof. Let's keep reading. Verse 10, Only they would that we should remember the poor. He said, as you go, remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. He said, I was already going to do that. I already do that. Look in verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Blamed was to find fault with. Paul found fault with Peter and he stood up to him in his face at Antioch. What did he stand up to him about? He tells us, For before that certain came from James, there was obviously a group that came with James. Before they came, listen to what he said. Peter, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. So before James and his buddies showed up, which were Jewish, Peter hung out with the Gentiles and sat down and ate with them. 
fellowshiped with them. But then whenever the Jews showed up, some Jews showed up, what did he do? And Paul's sitting back there. Paul's over at his table. You know, I'm, I'm, my mind goes back to a fellowship building. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's sitting around in their tables, eating dinner, having a good time. And suddenly James and a couple of his Jewish buddies come walking in and Paul's over here to the side watching Peter. And Paul sees Peter. Peter sees James and them. And all of a sudden, Peter's all like, Get away. Hey, James. Hey, guys. Hey. He didn't want to be seen with them. Well, Paul had a problem with that. Paul had a problem with that. And rightly so. Listen to what he says. He said, He separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision, and the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, in other words, they did, some other Jews did the same thing. Inasmuch that Barnabas, the guy that was with Paul, <laughs> also was carried away with their dissimulation. What does dissimulation mean? Anybody know? Separate. Their hypocrisy. Dissimulation means hypocrisy. He called him a hypocrite. But when I see walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. In other words, all right, just keep reading. I said unto Peter before them all, if thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews. Why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as the, do the Jews? In other words, when he, when he got up from them, that was teaching the Gentiles. My question is, what was Paul getting on to Peter for? Because what was Peter's hypocrisy? Because he... Because he was hanging out with the Gentiles? Because he didn't want to be seen hanging out with the Because he didn't want to be seen and live. Was he living as the Gentiles? He said, Why do thou that liveth after the manner of the Gentiles do and not as the Jews? What do you mean? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's not the teaching of the two gospels. The two Gospels teaches me that Peter lived as the Jews and preached a different Gospel, different set of rules for the Jews. And the Gentiles are supposed to be over here. But that's not what Paul got on to him about. He got on to him about getting up from the Gentiles and going over here and acting like the Jews. And he called them all hypocrites. Look back what he said. In verse 13, And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him. There was all kinds of Jews mingled up with the, with the Gentiles having a good time, fellowshipping. But then when certain high ups came around, suddenly they separated themselves and Paul called them hypocrites. Hypocrites said you're not following the truth of the gospel. The gospel. Am I saying that or is Paul saying this, ladies and gentlemen? Here's the deal. If there were two Gospels, Paul shouldn't have had a problem with Peter getting up. Matter of fact, Paul should have had a problem with Peter sitting down with the Gentiles. 
Paul should have come over to Peter and said, hey, you get away from these Gentiles. Don't you try to push your Jewish gospel on my Gentile gospel, boys. You get over there with your crowd and you teach, your, you teach the Jews what you're supposed to teach, Peter, and you leave the Gentiles up to me. Should that not have what the confrontation should have been? But it wasn't. They were all fellowship together hanging out. He called their hypocrisy is when they did separate. <laughs> yeah, two-faced. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of the Gentiles and not as do the Jews, he said, and that's the way you do and because that's the way you're supposed to be. Remember, because Paul's the one that says there's now no difference. There's now no difference. Why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature are not sinners of the Gentiles. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Who's he talking? He's still talking to Peter. He's still talking to Peter. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall... Who? No, no flesh. He didn't say no Gentile. He didn't say no Jew. He said no flesh shall be justified by the works of the law. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, and yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. I, I do not frustrate, that means to break or interrupt the grace of God, for if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. If The two gospel message, ladies and gentlemen, teaches that the Jews have got to be justified by works. That they've got a separate set of rules than the Gentiles. That's what it teaches. Did you get that out of this chapter? Anybody here get that out of this chapter? Well, verse 7 is the sound bite used. Verse 7 is the sound bite used. I didn't get it either. Now, I can certainly see, think about this. If you've never read Galatians ever, but somebody brought verse 7 to you, but contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, could you not see where they could take that verse of Scripture right there and say, see there, Paul had a gospel that was went to the circum uncircumcision and Peter had his gospel that he took to the circumcision. Couldn't you see where that could be twisted and made to think that? But when you put that verse in context of what he was telling the church at Galatia, and think about this, Paul even said earlier in the chapter or in chapter 1, at the end of chapter 1, what did he tell them? That they had heard only in verse 23 that he which persecuted us in times past 
now preacheth the faith. See, Paul, it didn't start. Paul got the whole revelation, but it didn't start with Paul. It didn't start with Paul. Now, it finished with Paul. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was a revelation of truth. Peter and the apostles got part of it. They got part of it, and God used them to start it. But then Paul came on the scene, and because of further revelation of truth, Paul received the whole counsel of God and was sent. Obviously, he said to the nations, but he obviously preached it to the Jews too because he just said right there that after 15 years, I went up and preached to those in Jerusalem the same gospel that I preached among the Gentiles. You can read in the book of Romans where Paul spoke to both Jew and Gentile. He spoke to them both. It was just you go back into the teachings of Jesus. Remember where he told his disciples, remember at one time he told his disciples, do not go to the nations. You go to the lost house of the tribe of Israel. Remember that? They had their marching papers too. But they were not preaching a gospel of works slash grace. Why? Did you not just hear what Paul said? What is works slash grace? Oil slash water. <laughs> Same thing. He just got through saying, if it's of works, then it is no more of grace. It's not both. You, Paul said, no flesh. No flesh. None. Will be justified by the works of the law. None. Right, right, absolutely. Yep, because remember, Peter wasn't the most, I don't know the word to use, but remember, Peter was the one that denied Christ standing around the fire pit the night Jesus was being judged. Peter was a hothead. He was the one that pulled his sword out and cut the ear off of the soldier. Peter was the, you get what I'm saying? So when Peter, he was very persuadable, obviously. But Paul said he wasn't that way. He said, Paul's the one that says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, see, Peter must have had a little bit in him because he'd, he'd switch tables on you. You're right, Harold. Peter never rebuked Paul. Paul rebuked Peter and I guarantee you, Peter pretty much probably just hung his head. I don't know that. That's alienology, but you're right. It never says, but Peter said back to me. It never said that. Paul basically burned him a new one, set him straight, and went on with it. Chapter 2. Lord, thank you. Thy word is truth. We want to learn truth, Father. We want to hunger for truth. And we do pray that the Spirit of God will guide us in all truth. We thank you for this word. We thank you, Lord, for what you've given us tonight. We pray that you'll bless the messages to come. Bless those that hear it. Bless those that read it. And Lord, I pray that you'll continue to just guide us and direct us down the paths of righteousness and in your truth. And Lord, we love you. We thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.